they quite forgot. Doesn't Grandpa give us lovely presents? said Hilary, looking at the walking, talking doll she'd been given for Christmas. This is my very best present of all. Well, what about my present? said Donald. I bet he spent even more money on that model yacht he sent me than on your doll. It's better than any yacht on the pond. You should see how the boys stare when I sail it there. Last year, Grandpa gave me my doll's house for Christmas, and when my birthday came in January, he sent me all the furniture for it, said Hilary, remembering. He sent you a railway train at Christmas and a station and signals for your birthday. Mother was listening. Yes, Grandpa's very kind to you, twins, she said. But you know, he was very upset last Christmas because you forgot to write and thank him for his present. Oh dear, thank you, let's see Boar, said Hilary. She looked at her twin. Aren't they, Donald? Yes, said Donald. They happen to be good manners, said Mother. Good manners are a big bore, said Donald. Really, said Mother. I'm sorry if it bores you to open the door for me, Donald, or to carry my basket, or let me go first into a room. It doesn't bore me to do those things, Mother, said Donald, going red. You know it doesn't. Anyway, I've written three thank you letters already, which is pretty good. Have you written to Grandpa? asked Mother. Don't write him a scrappy, untidy nord. I'll write him a long letter, promised Donald. So will Hilary. We will only put it off because thank you letters to Grandpa have to be very good ones. The telephone rang and Mother went out of the room. Donald kicked the leg of the table he was sitting at. Blow it! Why did I say that about good manners? Now Mother won't ask me to carry her basket or go on errands and I like doing things for her. Shall we write those thank you letters to Grandpa now? said Hilary. It was kind of him to send those smashing presents. Oh, all right, said Donald. But just as he was getting his fountain pen and some paper, he saw his friend Alec coming in at the gate. Oh, there's Alec. I forgot I'd ask him to come round, he said. Let's do the letters tonight, Hilary. Well, of course, they forgot. Blow it! We didn't do them, said Donald as he got out of bed. Never mind. Mother's sure to remind us. And Mother didn't remind them. She didn't say another word about Grandpa and the twins forgot all about the letters. They remembered them two days before their birthday, which of course was on the same day. I say, we forgot to thank Grandpa for his Christmas presents, said Hilary suddenly. How awful of us! Oh no, so we did, said Donald. Well, never mind, he'll be sending us our birthday presents in two days, and we can then write very, very, very nice thank you letters for both the Christmas presents and the birthday presents. Good idea, said Hilary. There were a lot of parcels on their birthday, and dozens of cards. The twins looked hurriedly at their parcels. Let's leave Grandpa's presents till last, they said. His are always the best. They must be in this big parcel, said Hilary. Mother, look at all the presents. Aren't we lucky? The twins opened their parcels. A book each from Auntie Meg, note paper with their initials on from Uncle Harry, a set of beautiful pencils each from Auntie Sue, and a dear little clock between them from their cousins. Really, they did have some nice presents. Now for Grandpa's, said Donald, and undid the big parcel in excitement. But it wasn't from Grandpa. It was from an old friend of their mother's who'd sent them a china cat and dog, and because they were breakable, they'd done them up in tissue paper, cardboard and a box. No wonder the parcel looked enormous. There's nothing from Grandpa, said Donald in surprise. Perhaps it'll come by the next post. But nothing came by the second post except a few more cards and a book from a friend. How strange. Mother, Grandpa must have forgotten our birthday, said Donald, disappointed. He's never, never done that before, said Hilary. Well, you can't possibly remind him, said Mother. The twins were sad. Grandpa's presents were always so grand. He said he wanted to give you a handbag, Hilary, and you an aeroplane, Donald, said Mother. I distinctly remember him saying so just before Christmas. Oh, no, said Hilary, almost in tears. A handbag. It would have been a wizard one. I know, better than any of the other girls have. Still, it was quite certain that Grandpa must have forgotten. He hadn't even sent them cards, as he always did. Then that afternoon, Mother had a letter from Grandpa. The children knew the writing on the envelope and waited eagerly to see if there was a message for them. There isn't a message for you, said Mother, looking up. But, oh dear, listen what Grandpa has written. 
As the twins did not write to thank me for their Christmas presents, I suppose they did not like them. I shall not bother to send them birthday presents, as I do not expect they would like those either. Oh, twins, so you didn't keep your promise and write to thank Grandpa. The twins were both very red. No, we forgot after all, said Donald. I'm sorry, Mother. Please don't look like that. I truly, truly am sorry. It's too late to be sorry now, said Mother. I'm afraid you've hurt Grandpa and made him cross. Such a kind old man, too. He's ill in bed and doesn't sound very happy. You'll make me cry on my birthday, Mother, said Hilary, blinking tears away, and that's unlucky. Somehow, the birthday was spoiled. After tea, the twins looked at their presents again and then looked at each other. Hilary, said Donald. I'm going to write to Grandpa straight away and own up and tell him I'm sorry and I'm going to spend half my birthday money on some flowers for him because he's ill. Oh, what a good idea, said Hilary, cheering up. I'll do the same, but I'll spend my money on pears for him. He loves pears. Mother came into the room when they were writing quite a long letter each. The twins showed her what they had written and she read their letters in silence and then she smiled. You're nicer children than I thought, she said. Grandpa will be pleased, but you won't get any birthday presents from him this year. You certainly wouldn't let him give you any, even if he wanted to. We don't expect them, said Donald. Gosh, I'll never forget again how horrid he must have thought of us. Now tomorrow I'm going out to order some flowers. Grandpa was very, very pleased. In fact, he said he felt much better when he read those two nice letters. He got out of bed and went to a cupboard. He pulled out a blue handbag with a gilt handle and a box with an aeroplane in. He wrote on a piece of paper, put it with the two presents and put them back in the cupboard again. What had he written? Oh, just a few words to remind him to do something at Easter. And this is what he'd scribbled on the paper. For the twins, to be sent to them for Easter without fear. Now wasn't that nice of him?